Isn't this blooming annoying when you head over to something like Google Scholar and you do a simple search like this, OPV devices, power conversion, and then you sort of scroll down, you're having a look at all the different titles and you're like, oh yeah, this is good, this is good. Oh, look at this one. Organic energy harvesting devices, over 20% under ambient indoor lighting conditions. Oh, that is exactly what I want. And then you click through and you're like, oh yeah, this is definitely going to really help me understand my research area and you're scanning through and you're like oh look at that very very basic um graphical abstract that's okay that i won't let that put me off but everything else looks really great and then you get hit with this boom 42 pounds 50 well Sometimes your institution allows you to access that and you sort of like can log in using your institution credentials and you can get access to it. But that's not always the case. So what do scientists and researchers do? Well, I'm going to show you the way that they probably shouldn't be using, but do all the bloody time. And that is head over to SciHub. SciHub is becoming or has become is actually a really great resource for a load of scientists and researchers when they just want access to peer-reviewed papers that they can't get because the peer-reviewed paper is behind a paywall. Yuck. So um, what they tend to do is then go back to where they couldn't get the journal and they go, okay, well, I need this. And this is what they want. You're looking for the DOI. Sometimes it's up here, sometimes it's down here, but here it's in this part of the sort of like layout. So I copy and paste that where you can also right click and go copy link address. That also works. And then you head over to SciHub, you put it in and you put that and you click open. And then SciHub will do its magic and open up the paper for you. Oh, but that doesn't always work. And also, quite understandably, some people are worried about the legalities of this, whether or not it's ethically the right thing for them to do, because maybe this is stealing. I don't know. Legally, in your country, it could be. So I'm going to show you today all of the different Sci-Hub alternatives that are not legal and legal, but people use them and use them wisely uh, and don't use them at all, actually. Yeah, that one. Don't use it. It's, it's naughty. So the first Sci-Hub alternative is Anna's Archive. You've probably heard me talk about this in the past before. You can get books, papers, magazines, comics, library records, everything, but it's this down here that we want. And the reason they exist is because it says here, Sci-Hub has paused uploading of new papers. So if the paper you're looking for is only sort of like recent, it may not be in Sci-Hub. So you can see here that Anna's Archive has direct access to over 92 million, nearly 93 million academic papers, whereas Sci-Hub, if we go back to the page, it has access to 88 Point three million. So there's more here and apparently they're uploading more and more as it goes. You need the DOI, the Document Object Identifier. I think it's what it means. I haven't checked that in a while. That's probably right. Um, and you can click and paste in there and you click open and you can end up getting the same uh, sort of like response, the PDF from uh, Anna's archive. And here it is. You can see this is where it's at. It's on Sci-Hub at the moment, but it'll also give you partial matches. So this may be a good way of sort of like finding other bits of actually no, I don't think that works actually. No, I'm lying to you. I'm bloody lying to you. Because here, um, they're only looking at the DOI. Anyway, here's what I want. This one here. You can also filter down the side. Oh, I haven't Let's have a look. Ooh, there we are. That's better. You can actually filter down the side. You can display it as a list or a table. Um, you can do advanced stuff. You've got journal article, which is obviously what we want. And you've got all of the different options. Obviously, there's only one here because it's found it. But if we click through, it will take me to a place where I can download it. Now, on Anna's archive, they are a little bit sneaky. Hmm, I don't like that. So what they do is they try to get you to click on all of these fast downloads and all of these slow downloads. But what you really want to click here is show external downloads. Click that and then this is where you can get it for free. And we'll talk about these ones as well because these are also places where you could potentially get this article. But I'm going to click on option one and if I can't get it there, then I go to option two and then option three. So remember to click on external downloads because 
because that's where we want to get the information and it tells you where to get it. It also gives you a little bit of warning down here. Their ads are known to contain malicious software, so use an ad blocker or just don't click the ads. You do have to be careful when you're going into these little shady areas, but Anna's Archive has got your best interests at heart, I think, and they do know um, what to look out for. So just heed a little bit of warning. Is that the right phrase? I don't know. I completely forgot. It's a bloody Friday. Anyway, um, just be careful when you're clicking through on links or don't click the links. Um, anyway, you can just go through here and uh, yeah, that's the first place I go if Sci-Hub isn't working for me. But check out these other ones and stay around to the end because I'm going to show you the legal ways to get it, uh, just in case you're feeling a little bit uneasy about all this. The next place you want to go is Library Genesis. I head here if the first two of them didn't work for me. Um, I go to Library Genesis and you can go here, put the DOI, that same link that we had from before, into that search box and you click this one scientific articles click there and then you've got all these options I've never really touched those to be honest but then I click search and this will go away and do a similar thing and you can see it brings up the paper here and you can just go through to find the paper you can click you can go through find it report an error edit the record all of that sort of stuff so it will tell you where it is it's in sci-hub it's in libgen it's in libgen rs libgen li all of these places is where you can go and get it um, and yeah it's a you know you click up here get and you'll be able to download that uh, paper another place i like to go is z library z library these two sort of like libgen and z library they've got a bad name for themselves because they're completely sort of like flaunting the uh the copyright of the owner but they do exist and people do go here so don't do it yourself but just know about them. Okay then, so Z Library is another place where I go, and uh, yeah, you can see, once again, you can put in either the title or the DOI. Let's go grab the DOI again, put that in there, and click search, and then it will go away, check I'm human, make sure that, uh, you know, I'm not trying to spam their website with any bots, and then down here, you've got books and articles. Oh, not found, so we'll go back. Articles, nothing on this uh, has been found, so here, Z Library isn't great, but some Sometimes I find Z Library, it can find the paper, and in other times, uh, Libgen finds it. But to be honest with you, if Sci-Hub and Anna's Archive don't have it, then quite often this is a bit of a waste of time because Z Library and the other one doesn't have it. But for the sake of a little bit of a search, I always go through that process just to make sure that I can actually access the journals that I want to access. Um, and now we're going to talk about other legal ways to make sure that you are staying on the right side of the law. Here's your little bonus tips, you little cheeky monkeys. So the first place I would go if I want to stay within the legal limits of all this is unpaywar.org. And it's this product up here, the browser extension that I really like. You can click and read research papers for free. As you're searching the web, you'll see this little button come up along the side and uh, it's available on Chrome or any Chromium stuff. So I'm running Vivaldi because it's my favorite browser. Um, but but uh, you can also upload it to Firefox as well. And you can see that it, this little thing pops up on the side. And if it's green with a little open padlock, you're good to go. So that's the first place I would go. The second place I'd like to go is here, the open access button. The open access button um, allows you to avoid paywalls and request research. So free legal research articles delivered instantly or automatically requested from authors. So what happens is you put your DRL, so you put your URL, DOI, or anything else in here. Did I say the first acronym right? Editor, can you put it here? Is that right or wrong? Flashback. You put your DRL, so you put your DRL, DRL, DRL. End of flashback. All right, then. Um, so here we've got, uh, yeah, you can put the normal thing in here and then you can click it. And if it doesn't have it, it automatically sends a request to the corresponding author to say, hey, I want access to your article. And you see with all of this, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the original owners and, and creators of that research, i.e. the authors. Yeah, that's better way of saying it. Um, they can give out this paper for free. So 
If you find something, you've gone through all of this and you still can't find it, feel free to reach out to the researcher. Now, there was this kind of like famous tweet going around being like, reach out to us, we love it. I've reached out to a number of academics and to be honest with you, they do not get back in contact. I have no idea why, they're just busy, I guess. They're just busy, but like this tweet made it seem like we're all just waiting there by our computers being like, oh, someone's asked for my paper, I'll send it out. But I've asked for like a number of papers over the years and I think, I don't think I've got a single response back being like, oh yeah, here's my paper, unless I know that person personally. So anyway, your mileage may vary. Y-M-M-V. Yeah, I only learned that acronym recently. Yeah, it was confusing me for years. Anyway, so uh, yeah, you can see here it's it's uh, gone out and requested it, but uh, yeah, it's not here. So that's one place, the open access button, um, but you never know, you may be lucky and it may be in here for you. Um, and obviously, if you're doing all of this, it means there's something wrong with the access to science. So if you want to publish your research in an open access journal, you can go over here to the DOAJ. I think it's like the, uh, what's it, oh, is a unique repository? What is, uh, about, what is your, I've forgotten your blooming thing. Ah, okay, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Directory of Open Access Journals. Whew, ah, that didn't make me look silly at all, great. Okay, Directory of Open Access Journals, and here you can just make sure that you are publishing in journals where your work will be easily accessible to people who want to cite your work. Your work will go up in terms of citations, your h-index will go up in terms of citations. It's better for everyone if you can afford the open access fees, and I know not everyone is in that sort of like privileged position, but to make sure that you're publishing in an open access journal, go put it in here. You can see it's got all sorts of um, yeah records that you can choose the appropriate journal for your work. Great, good, done. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about the best Google Scholar alternatives that even your supervisor doesn't know about. I think you'll love it.